How's it going, Internet Land? This is Zachmus Prime, aka Zachmus Prime, here with another Transformers third-party review. And uh, today is actually it's something actually kind of interesting. Not just what I'm reviewing, but how I got it. I what I'm reviewing today is the Magic Square Light of Freedom. This is uh, Magic Square's take on a masterpiece scaled Optimus Prime. I say masterpiece scaled, not masterpiece styled, because while it is masterpiece styled. I also consider their um, their legend scale figures to be masterpiece style. So, um, but no, interestingly enough, this figure is brought to you by Titan One Toys. Titan One Toys, I thought was out, but he got one more shipment in. As far as I know, this is it. But go ahead and hit him up, see if you can get one of these. And um, this figure is actually pretty great. Um, so. Way back when, when Trent Hasbro Takara, when Takara came out with the um, with the MPO one, the first masterpiece Transformers figure, um, and it just kind of blew everybody's mind. It was done in a real kind of boxy, chunky, technical style, um, and didn't look. I mean, it referenced the animation um, design a lot, of course, but it didn't really look like it just hopped off the screen. Um, Years later, they came out with the MP10, and that was a step in the right direction. But lately, especially real recently, Hasbro has or Takara has been moving more and more and more and more specifically towards trying to make that just popped off the screen look. And um, a lot of these third-party companies have been starting to work in response to that as well. Hence, this guy. This guy was actually announced on the same day that I believe. I believe it was the same day. That um, that Takara's MP44, the masterpiece Optimus Prime 3.0, was announced, and um, I honestly feel that this looks better, um, and it costs like a third as much. Um, like this is a really really great figure. Um, gosh, it even it even has a number of notable advantages over. Even your old classic boy MP10 here. But anyhow, I digress. Those guys, by the way, look really great together. You know what else looks really great with this guy? Let's straighten this out. MP36. Like they are the right height to each other, they're the right look to each other. This guy is maybe a little. I don't know. This guy is very complicated looking. Um, but one of the things I like about this figure is that he's very simple looking. Like he's not just like this guy, you know, he's got the smooth panels and whatnot. But I mean, he also is, is adorned with a whole pile of panel lines, which of course you need for what he does. And you look at this piece here and there's like a thousand different pieces up there just waiting to be configured around and turned into his gun mode and whatnot. But like this guy, he almost looks simplistic. Um, like that's that's impressive all around. Um, especially his legs look really nice too. Um, you know they they've hidden they've hidden a few of the details on the back, and I think that that's I mean that's that's it that's how it should be if you have details that you have to hide. On the external of the figure, I kind of hide them all on the back. I think it does a good job of that, but um, just really, really nice. I like this. I like this figure a lot. I'm sorry, spoiler alert, but I like it. But um, anyhow, let's talk about let's talk about um, accessories that it comes with. So it comes with a little lunch bag of accessories. And I'm just going to kind of dump them all out here. So, first of all, he has his, um, his gun, which is kind of a, kind of an iconic thing for him. Um, but he's got just your regular tab right here. Just a basic tab system that we're all familiar with. Move his thumb out. Stuff it into there. Curl his fingers around that. And he holds it quite well. 
It's a it's a good looking gun. It's um it's much bigger than the one that came with the uh, the MP10, um, which I think really does a lot of things for it. Um, just it's a nice looking gun. Fairly simple though. It's all this black plastic. This black plastic with just a faint amount of um, metallic flake in it. I'm not sure if that's a if that's a plastic feature. If that's like a oh hello. Anyhow, I'm not sure if that's that's molded into the plastic or if that's a coating thing, um, like a paint job. It definitely looks like it's molded into plastic as I take a look at it. Gray paint app here, but it just looks good, gets everything, hits all the boxes that you need it to hit. Almost looks like, you yeah, know. So there's his gun. Um, he also comes with his energy axe, which he, sh he used for like all of like one episode in the entire series. But like everybody's like, no, this is the most distinctive thing ever. Every every version of Optimus Prime needs to come with this. So the way this works is you split this right here. Unlike the um, MP10 or even the MP01, um, this is not made out of a soft plastic. This is a sharp plastic. This will this will kill you. So you put his fingers like this, like he's going like this. Then you slide this into there. It fits into the same tab, the same hand tab, and then you curl his fingers all the way around, and you gotta put them in behind his thumb just like that. And that'll allow the clearance to take this, and this will just slide right over the top. There's a slot right here that comes around the end of this, and there's a little flange inside here. And you'll put that into there, and it just fits right on. So there's his there's his axe. His axe is noticeably smaller than the last couple Energon axes I've had with Optimus Prime figures. Um, in that the width of this axe face is not much bigger than the the, the ball part on his hand. Um, gosh, it's been a really long time since I've seen that episode of Transformers, so I, I don't know offhand whether that's how uh, how particularly animation accurate that is. But, um, but I mean, it looks good. Still maintains his, uh, you know, crystal and whatnot, and it, you know, it's, it encloses his hand from all angles. So that's, that's a, you know, it gets all, it gets all the job done. Um, other accessories he has, he has an alternate head. This is just a cover for the front of the head. Um, this has got kind of his more like ball cap look, and this has got more of like a brimmed look. Um, upon looking at this and checking it out, MP10 kind of tries to work halfway in between, whereas um, this is more. I don't know. Like I've always, I've always remembered Optimus Prime in the show as having. I, I always. Felt that his hat, his head looked like, like a baseball cap with a thing over it and the ears. And this is, I mean, this just this looks more right to me than this one. Um, I'm not gonna swap these out because it requires a screw. Um, but that is just right here. You unscrew this, it'll come off. Put the other one on, and uh, and there you have it. You've swapped out his head. Um, all the, the other accessories he comes with is all of the sad Optimus parts. So you can have them look all battle damaged and beat the hell up. Um, and they are, they're actually fairly nicely made little pieces. Um, you know, they've got holes to go through them and this detail molded in. Applied with a little bit of paint apps to uh, make that stick out. You can see that silver paint app in there. Of course, you can see it really clearly on these bullet holes. Also, a little damage detail for this part of his torso and a little hole detail for this part of his torso. Um, not quite how it looked in Transformers the movie. Um, but anyhow, to, to apply these, 
we're going to open up his chest, which by the way, he's got a matrix in there. I should probably mention this. Um, matrix, I believe, is die cast. Has a blue clear part in the middle. Um, strangely enough, looks just like the matrix that comes with the uh, with the little uh, there uh, magic square uh, ultra magnus, which doesn't interact with that figure in pretty much any way, to be honest. So with this open, you can just take and you can push in the front to pop these out. Um, which is both a blessing and a curse, I think, um, in that I really kind of, when you're messing around with this guy and transforming him, it's so easy to push on the chest of, you know, when you're, when you're pushing the center, when you're holding it in such a way, and you can feel those shift, and you're like, God damn it, it's, it's out of alignment again. But um, you'll see that these, that these um, have different, uh, slots in them. The, the, the tabs are in slightly different alignment. Actually, they look like they're exactly the same. Well, crap. <laughs> but I will tell you that they are sloped. You'll see that they've got this angle to them. Uh, and let me, let me go like that. You can see this angle that's in them. It only goes one way. So you line it up so that your your slope, your slope to the part lines up, and that your tabs line up, and then you know you've got the right one. It just fit in using those tabs. See, there's a slot, 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 slot. These tabs will fit into those slots. And you can swap out the chest parts. And to do his torso area, what you need to do is you kind of need to mildly untransform him just to get pull on this chest plate okay, part here. Fold these out. And then you can just take and yank on this part here. Oh wait, to give yourself a better grip, you want to turn these um, just like a quarter turn. And you can really easily get your finger on that. Just yank on it and it comes right off. This one, it's just got a little tab, fits into that slot right there. And same with the other side. Rotate these back into position. I really do like how, so on this figure they use, instead of silver um, for a lot of the paint, and, for a lot of the accent details, they use um, gray, just gray all the way across the board. And I think that looks really good. And there he is all busted up and mangled. Um, and sad. I don't know. When I was a kid, I was I was really sad when Optimus Prime died. But um, if that's if that's the look you wanted to, to, to recreate for your shelf, uh, there you go. You got all the things you need to have them looking kind of busted up. I'm going to quickly put it back because I'm going to transform him, and I don't want him to look all busted when I transform him. This is the star of the show. But really, his transformation is pretty nice. So, pop these off. Put that on. Put that on. There we go. And there we go. Close that. Oops. Rotate that, bring them up, close this down, chest in place. There goes this little thing that I already pushed on. I already pushed on his window. All right. I could have just gone from there because that's actually where I started this transformation, but I wanted to start from the default state here. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull his arms out all the way. You'll see that they're on a number of different sliders. I didn't talk about articulation. Let's talk about articulation before I get into the transformation. His head is going to be on a swivel like this, plus it also pivots up and down. Looks down, looks up. The uh, ears are articulated. I don't know that his ears ever actually articulate in the show, but you can move them out. I always like to move them so that this line here and this line here are basically parallel with each other. And that's how I prefer to put Optimus Prime's ears. His shoulder will move, has got rotation that comes all the way around here. It will move out, which exposes this joint here, which allows that to go up. Um, I've heard people complain about saying how much nicer the joint structure on this is than MP10 and the shoulders being a particular thing. Um, but I mean, that's, that's basically exactly how it's done with MP10. It slides out, pivots. In fact, even if you look at the detail of the joint, it looks almost the same. Note, this is ratcheted. It will also slide out even more than that on this little, this little articulation joint in here. You can actually bend his arm considerably forward or considerably back. So a lot of, lot of range of motion on that shoulder. Um, he's got a, um, so he has a number of joints just right here. So he's got a bicep joint right here. But in addition to that, he's also got a rotation joint right here. This is technically a transformation joint, but it actually works fairly well in posing your figure. If you've got a pose that you have in mind for that, he's got an elbow joint right here. And then another elbow joint right here. which is pretty nice. The, um, the whole thing kind of just swoops into place here. It is, um, it's, I feel that this joint moves easier than this joint. The upper joint moves easier than the lower joint, but um, the lower joint looks better. It's, I think it looks as a better elbow joint because this one just feels like it's really high up on the arm. Uh, for a lot of poses, you're going to either use them both or it's really not going to matter. So whatevs. Um, he's got a wrist swivel. Um, no forward, backwards angling movement. Um, it's just on a mushroom pig right here. You can see it on the back of his palm. Um, he's got a ball joint for his thumb and a hinge joint on his on his thumb and then each finger is individually articulated with a with a hinge joint at the base of the finger and one hinge joint mid finger so yes he can make all of your naughty gestures he has a waist joint and he has this um, double articulated um, this is a transformation joint as well but I mean by the way that is, that is a good design there. Like it's, it's fairly strong, <laughs> but you can use this as a, uh, as an ab crunch, both forward. And I mean like all the way forward and back, like all the way back. Like I, I he, he's broken back. <laughs> he has, um, when we first saw the great prototype, he didn't have any kind of cut here. It was just all one piece. Nobody likes that. So Magic Square actually listened and they made it all multiple pieces, which is great. So he's got these hip skirt things, which will move out of the way. This one here is all connected all the way towards the back. So if you bring it out too, too much, it's going to look weird back here. Um, but you can bring it out enough that you need to uh, to articulate him. His leg will go that far forward, that far back. He will do a full Van Dam. Actually, he will do like 110% Van Dam. Oh, I just noticed something. 
this panel is not in place. Hold on a second. Let me fix that. Normally I catch these things before I do that, but not always. I am, after all, just a human being like anybody else. Well, maybe not like anybody, anybody else, because I'm pretty certain that Dwayne Johnson is not human. He's probably from, like, another world, a world of muscle. All right, fixed it. I'll show you how I fix it in a minute, because that's one of the transformation steps. So, full Van Dam on that. Um, he's got a double-jointed bend at the knee. This joint here is ratcheted. This joint here is not, this upper joint is not, but it also exposes this cool little, cool little piston detail, which I think is fun. That being said, this, um, this joint that's in the back, I mean, is not, it is not a loose joint at all. It's, it's, it's a nice tight joint. Uh, this is my only articulation beef I have with this figure. He has basically none. He has the tiniest amount of forward and back movement on his ankle. Um, and I wish that he had more because then he could do like more stepping poses and whatnot. That being said though, his articulation on his toes is actually really great. Um, this joint, he's got a joint in here that's really a transformation joint, but it makes his toes move really well, forwards and back, plus um, heel articulation. His heel will come out and it'll go back a little bit and recess a little bit. So, I mean, you can still move him around quite a bit and get a good solid, um, get a good solid, you know, base on his foot. He does have ankle articulation. He's got ankle articulation for days. But yeah, if they could have made that foot like come out a little bit more so that there was more range on that rocker, that would have been... That would have really rocked. <laughs> Anyhow. But let's get him transformed up for reals this time. So, first thing we're going to do with him is I'm going to open up. You know, pull, up, pull up these arms a little bit. Give me some space. Open up his chest. Raise this up just a bit. Going to get your finger under here and you're going to unhook this panel here. This panel fits in via these tabs. There's tabs that fit into slots that are on his midsection, so you need to pull those out. This rotates out, rotate this, and there you are starting to form his bumper. I'm going to pull this out a little bit more. So we're going to take this, just rotate this down right here, bring this all the way around, and then bring this up, up at this joint right here. That's going to bring that in line here. And then we're going to do the same for the other side. Now there's a tab here that's going to fit into a slot in this chrome grill part. And then there's a tab on this upper grill that's going to fit into a slot back here. And just kind of wedge that into place. And then you can close these windows. We actually don't need anything else from him. And now you've made G1 Fatimus Prime. Masterpiece, Fatimus Prime. No. Well, I mean, you have, but... Yeah, I just kind of did it that way specifically so that you'd make that as you follow these instructions at home. So, when you put this down here, you're going to want to make sure that his head is perfectly squared up. Um, because if it's misaligned, it's not going to go well. It's not going to work out. His head will come down, and it will kind of just fit into this spot here. And then you need to pull his ears forward about that much. And you got to be careful with this because his ears fit 
exactly into this space here with um, basically nothing to spare. So you have to have all that lined up properly because you don't want to end up damaging those ears or anything like that. So that gets his head squared away. I'm going to kind of pull this out just a little bit. That's all I really need for now. It's going to go in some time later, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. So for his hands, for his arms, you want to take his thumbs, put them in, fold them all the way up to the base, and then fold his fingers all the way in. Just basically fold them up as much as you can. You're going to come to the back of the arm, and you're going to grab this whole panel here, and you're going to kind of yank this out about that much. You can also take this point, stick your, oh wait, you can't put your finger in there, but you can kind of open this up. Open, open sesame. There we go. This panel, by the way, has, has is squared on the end of it. It kind of needed a little bit of a radius, a little bit of a chamfer, um, because you can feel it rubbing against this elbow joint when it comes out. So you're going to make sure all this stuff comes out. And then you're going to carefully pull this out. And I say carefully because this little thing is on a very, very small ball joint right here. And I'm always worried about very, very small ball joints. So it's going to come all the way out. Be mindful of this. This may have detached inside your uh, figure before transformation. Um, it will just pop right off. It's got a keyed uh, peg in there so it'll go in in a specific angle. You can just put that back in. There's a panel right here that's going to flip out. And then this panel here is a door and it's going to come around and if you're looking on the underside or the back side of it, it's going to kind of line up and continue. And I hit my limit so I know that this is going to be a long video. I apologize guys. With this being in place like that, you're going to take this and you're going to bend at the upper elbow joint all the way. Then you're going to rotate. Actually, we should probably rotate first. Rotate at this. Here, let me take this panel here. Fold this panel down and all the way in. Let me show you this from the front so we can get a clear view of it. You're going to fold this down and all the way past zero so that this up this the panel that was here is going to be perpendicular to that rotate this 90 degrees and then bend his elbow at this upper joint 90 degrees what that'll do is you can see of course that there's this this slot ah, get out of the way stuff you can see that there's this slot and this slot these were for the robot mode there's a third slot in his elbow and this tab here is going to go into that third slot. And this is actually a little bit tricky because like, the stars have got to be aligned properly. But it needs to be in there and it needs to be in there fairly secure. Just take this hand, flip it around, and that will allow all of this to be fairly flat. And let's do it again real quick with the other side. So we're going to bring this, make sure, make sure that this lower elbow joint is very straight with the arm otherwise it's going to mess everything up bring his arm up rotate it bring it all the way up to 90 degrees pull on this joint here there's our panels inside out fold out this panel here line up that door this will come out fold fold bring his hand in reposition this in there Alrighty, now we're ready for the next step, which is to simply move this back and into its final position. Oh, 
I don't know why it's fighting me today. Oh, it's because I didn't pull it out all the way. This needs to be pulled out all the way, otherwise it's not going to fold back properly. So then you can fold it back and just kind of collapse that in. Move the elbow into place. And collapse that in. And there it all goes. Again with the other side, pull this all the way out. Bring this back. Bring this part forward. Collapse that up. Collapse that up. And there we go. And now you've got your Masterpiece G1 Truck Man. Half man, half truck. All justice. You're going to rotate his waist joint, this one right here, rotate this all the way so that his yellowy parts are showing towards the back of the cab. You're going to pull this all the way out on this armature here. And this panel is going to fit into this slot right here. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to bring it up on that armature first. You're going to lower this all the way down. And then you're going to kind of touch it to that. And then just push it in. And there it is, all lined up. And now, the legs. The legs are actually... They they feel like they should be the most complicated part, but they're actually the easier half of the figure. So what you want to do is you, you want to take... Grab the back of his leg, this part here, and just kind of pull this out a bit. This is going to pull out, and then you can yank on this panel right here. So you've got this all the way out. You can then take and begin to rotate. There's a hinge up in here that's going to allow you to rotate this forward and out. Once you've cleared this wheel well, you can bring this and pull on it. It will come straight out just like that. There's a peg that it's on. You're going to rotate it out part way and then fold out this part and fold out this part bring it up it's going to come in line with the body here i'm not going to do anything with that right now uh, i'm going to focus on the foot real quick um this panel here is going to fold in like so this panel here is going to fold down and in like this is just all going to collapse up like that And then you are going to fold in this little panel here and fold in this big panel here. It's going to come all the way up. You will find that this is going to be basically what I, what I now refer to as a combiner war style joint. There's a tab here that's going to fit into that wheel well. Put that in. Then you can take this, with this panel folded up, you can rotate this at, right here at this hinge. And then rotate it down. There's a tab here that's going to fit into a slot behind the tires. Tab that in. And then there's a tab here that's going to fit into that slot right there. And just all folds up nicely. You're going to take this. There's a dovetail. Let's see if I can get it so you can see it. Of course, I can see it. There's a dovetail right here. This slot's going to fit into that. And that is a leg all done. Is that rubber tires? That is rubber tires. I am really, really of two minds about rubber tires. Hmm. All right. Again, for the other side, we're going to do this all just like the first one. So we're going to pull on this panel here. It's going to allow us to pull on this panel here. Bring that all the way out, fold this out, 
start to bring this joint up. If you need more space in here, you can just take this and flip this up and move this leg out a bit. As, as you can see, he's got enough Van Dam to make this really easy to do. Bring it out so it clears that wheel well. Bring that up, rotate that out. Unfurl. And unfurl. Bring that back in line. Toes. This is going to come back. Fold in. This is going to fold in. There's your hinge right there. It's going to come in. I feel like I'm caught up on something. Oh, yes. This tab right here probably could have used a little bit of rounding out or maybe a chamfer on it so it slides past this properly as it is you might need to pull on this you might need to pull out on this panel just ever so slightly to squeeze that past there there we go put that in fold 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 tab slot tab slot dovetail in there kind of squish him a bit oh son of a gun I forgot this, this step now in light of this I want to say I don't know exactly why this step exists because it doesn't really do anything So the one I'll show you what I missed. It's not, like I said, it's not a critical step, but it is a step nonetheless. So when I have this joint in its halfway combiner jointed state, that's when you come in and reach in to the underside underneath here and you push up on this and it rotates the little thing around and it doesn't really do anything because it only hides half of that that little louver system those vents it only hides half of that it doesn't hide the other half and um i don't know i think the idea was just to make it look slightly less like a prime's leg and maybe slightly more like something that's not prime's leg which is how transformers go is you know a lot of these things, especially when it comes to Optimus Prime, you don't turn them into a realistic looking truck. You turn them into something that looks more like a truck than it does look like a robot. And that is the success. Because as you can see, just like with MP10, like this half of it looks really truck-like and this half of it looks absolutely not. But whatevs. And there he is. The Light of Freedom in his vehicle mode, and um, it's actually pretty good. I mean, like I was saying, when you think about the uh, considerations of, you know, Masterpiece style Optimus Primes, like this part pretty much has got to be big and chunky because that's where his legs go. You know, his legs have to go somewhere. And of course, real trucks are not like that. But um, this part looks really good. You can um, play with this by opening up the doors like that there's of course nothing literally nothing in there um but yeah you know from the front you can have them like this look his door room this is real obvious here there's no weapon storage on this as well oh i forgot to put the matrix back in there it's okay this is something that you can easily do from vehicle mode there you go Matrix is in place. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So he does have those things that come out 
they um they do not line up. Here's the connector for the MP10 trailer. Here's the back of uh, his legs. They do not line up. Furthermore, I don't know. I think that this sits a little high. So this is all kind of sloped out. I mean, of course, you can just like sit here and just like hook it on there and be like, hey, look, it's all connected. Yay. You know, I mean, these are toys. Toys are all about imagination, right? So you can imagine that the trailer fits with it, but it is not designed to work with this trailer and it does not look 100% when you put it on there. But. But yeah, rubber tires, and they do roll fairly well. It's um, it's a, it's a really good figure. Um, I really like it a lot. I, I highly recommend it to somebody who, you know, is, is starting to feel that in light of some of the more recent, um, gosh, basically since Inferno on, um, the, uh, the Takara masterpieces have all been looking more and more and more like they just popped off of the G1 screen. And um, MP10 is starting to more and more and more not really fit in with that look. So if you feel like, like your collection really needs a more anime looking Optimus Prime, I think this is really the way to go. Like I said, it doesn't have quite all of the bells and whistles of the MP44, you know, because there's no like Starscream part. There's no... Uh, flight stand, there's no, I don't know, a couple of things of that house. But it's a third the price, man. Like, like use your, use your wallet sensibly. Also, really interesting, this is a clear part right here in that, in that wheel well, right in there. I don't know why. Doesn't make any sense. But, um, yeah. Great looking figure. I like it a lot. Um, thanks everybody for watching. This review has been a little bit longer than normal. Um, and I apologize for that, but I, just, I had things I had to cover. So thank you everybody for watching. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, go talk to Titan One Toys, see if he's got any more of these on hand. And, um, you guys are all fantastic. I'll see you around. Catch you on the flip side. Have a great day. Bye.